Hi there, uh, this is Jón Gunnar Bernburg speaking to you from the University of Iceland. Uh, this video provides a very brief introduction to the labeling theory of crime, along with some very quick remarks about the empirical status of labeling theory within criminology. And um, I should note that uh, on the final slide of this talk, you will find uh, a, rev uh, a review chapter by me listed where you can find all the references that uh, appear on the, on the slides of, of, in this talk. So, first of all, the labeling theory's distinct contribution to criminology is that it draws attention to the unintended consequences of criminal justice. And uh, labeling theory really is an excellent um, example of uh, what Robert Merton uh, told us to do, the influential sociologist, he told us that we should not only look at the manifest functions of social institutions, that is, we should not only look at what they are meant to do, but we shall, should also look at the unintended consequences of social institutions, that is, what they actually do to people's lives, even if it is uh, often unintentional. And so, in this vein, Criminal justice intervention is meant to deter offenders from re-offending. Now this view is based on a very sort of a simple um, individualistic view of people as rational uh, calculators who just seek uh, pleasure and avoid pain. Now labeling theory rejects this assumption and says no, Individuals are social beings. Their behavior is always the function of the social context that they find in their lives. So the argument of labeling theory goes that the unintended effects of criminal justice labeling include social stigma, social exclusion, and deeper involvement in crime. So let's review the major themes here. First of all, criminal labeling uh, to be marked or defined as a criminal offender ignites negative stereotypes of criminals as innately immoral and fundamentally different from the rest of us. And these negative stereotypes, they are really learned uh, in childhood. They're part of our uh, socialization into our culture, such as uh, Walt Disney's Beagle Boys, for example, very bad people. Um, secondly, due to this uh, fact of negative stereotypes in our culture, criminal labels can become the person's master status. Now, this is a concept from Howard Becker, master status, and it means that, you know, whether you're a nurse or a professor or a worker, teacher, it doesn't really matter. If people see you as a criminal offender, that will be your master status. That will determine how people will treat you and how people will see you. And uh, they will see you on, on the terms of these negative stereotypes. Uh, Goffman referred to this as social stigma, and it means that you will become, or you will tend to become devalued across different social situations. Third, uh, the third theme of labeling theory is that criminal justice is a major source of criminal labeling. Arrest, conviction, trial, these are ceremonies of labeling. And uh, the theorists will often argue that it is very difficult, once you have gone through these ceremonies of formal labeling, it is very difficult to get rid of the label. So, in a sense, uh, we have ceremonies to label people as criminals, but we have no ceremonies to de-label individuals, which is why the criminal label tends to stick to the person. Fourth theme, um, regardless of actual behavior, powerless individuals are much more likely to be labeled. And surely there is plenty of evidence, both on the arrest stage and on the conviction stage, that powerless individuals, especially racial minorities in the US, are more likely to be uh, arrested, convicted and so forth, 
regardless of what actually happened objectively. Fifth, uh, the final theme um, is that the theory argues that there are several social consequences for the labeled individual. All of these social con consequences imply that criminal labeling, especially formal criminal labeling or criminal justice labeling, may lead to deeper involvement in criminal behavior. And this is what uh, Edwin Lemert uh, refers to as secondary deviance. So secondary deviance, that's the kind of deviant behavior that people do because of all the problems caused by labeling. Now what are these problems? Well, there are two major theories uh, on the subject. The first theory argues that deviant labeling may change uh, the person's self-image or self-concept. So people, in a sense, internalize their master status and become uh, to see themselves as criminals, as deviants, and they, become, they, they begin to act as criminals and deviants because that has become their self-image. That's one process. The other process um, comprises several processes of social exclusion. And this entails both rejection and withdrawal. So by rejection we mean that you know, employers, teachers, others will tend to reject labeled individuals. So an employer may not hire a person because of a criminal record. A teacher or a prince school principal may be more likely to uh, expel the student if he knows that he has been labeled uh, by the criminal justice system and so forth. But there's also uh, withdrawal, which means that the labeled individual becomes a part of his or her own social exclusion. Because the fact is that if you're labeled, it becomes very difficult to you, to you to present yourself in a favorable light in various social situations. And so in to avoid shame, to avoid embarrassment and uncomfortable situations, you simply withdraw from all of these situations. So exclusion can be by others, but it's also a part of what in labeled individuals do to avoid uncomfortable social situations. The scientific status of labeling theory. Um, labeling theory has an interesting story within criminology. Uh, in the 1960s, it became very popular, this perspective, as a part of social critique, part of the critique on uh, the traditional social system. Uh, but the, the scientific status of the research was very weak. More recently, especially during the 2000s and 2010s, labeling research has become much more rigorous uh, based on longitudinal measurements, measurement rich data. And what has happened during the past two decades is that evidence favoring the labeling uh, theory has accumulated and in this past 10 years it has accumulated quite rapidly. So if we just look at really briefly on this slide here, this is the key hypothesis. Well, does formal labeling at time two influence criminal labeling at time two while controlling for criminal involvement at time, at, at time one? And there is actually uh, uh, um, several studies, uh, quite, uh, quite a few studies that confirm this hypothesis and some of these studies are very very rigorous, uh, apply a lot of uh, uh, statistical control. Second, you can see on this slide that there has also accumulated quite a bit of evidence for all of these social consequences of labeling. So consequences for the self, consequences for uh, relationship to other people, for example, parent-child relations, uh, peers rejection, ties to conventional others, uh, labeling, especially formal labeling, does seem to harm your relationship to conventional others. And finally, labeling 
there's, there's quite a bit of evidence and there's a lot of evidence actually for the effect of labeling on employment where employers seem to reject uh, convicted felons and those who bear the criminal label have a lot of difficulties finding stable employment. So there's a lot of evidence for this. Uh, just really quick, the literature suggests various ways to think about when labeling has a particularly harmful effect on the person's life. For example, uh, scholars have found that if you are a son, for example, a son of a convicted father, you are more vulnerable to the effects of labeling. Also, minorities, especially racial minorities, they may become, they may have a harder time resisting the effect of labeling and uh, so forth. What I want to note here is that the broader social context may also matter. Most of the work has been done in the US. Most of the research has been done in the US. And the US is often uh, taken as a, an example of a society that really stigmatizes offenders. So we need a lot more research outside of the US uh, to really uh, know how generalizable a lot of these findings are. Um, so, in conclusion, present evidence suggests that criminal labeling has unintended consequences. It may be harmful for the self, it may produce social exclusion, and it may uh, uh, lead to deeper involvement in crime. There is more research needed. We need uh, better measures of the situational aspects of labeling. So, for example, how individuals experience devaluation in the situation. There's really not a lot of work that really goes into the situations of labeled individuals. And finally, we need more studies from settings outside of the US. And I will end this uh, brief intro by showing you uh, some readings and you can see uh, my chapter on labeling theory published in the Springer Handbook of Crime and Deviance. This chapter is from 2009. Of course, a lot of stuff has happened since 2009 and I have an updated chapter forthcoming later this year in 2019. You can find the 2009 chapter on the internet. You can download it and read it. But uh, the updated chapter will be published later this year and I encourage you to uh, follow up on that if you're uh, interested. So thank you for hearing me out and have a pleasant day.